Hello and welcome back to Through the Trap Door. I'm Katie. And I'm Emily. And this is our podcast where we read you Harry Potter fan fiction. So we're on to chapter six. Six of 26. Oh, geez. Only 20 more chapters. Woohoo! The name of this chapter is Secrets and Love Letters. Ooh. Hmm. Like a spicy. <sighs> Potato. Sirius said, po-tay-to, potato, 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 potato. I love potatoes. If I had a potato, boy, I'd skin that potato, and then I'd boil it, that potato, and then I'd chop that potato, and then I'd mash that potato, and I'd salt and pepper and butter that potato, and then, boy, I would eat that potato in all its mashed potatoey goodness. Okay, serious. Okay. Um, I think he's on drugs. <laughs> I think he is still on the drugs. Yes. From last week. Something. He's on something. He's gotta be. Nobody has a, that much of a potato rant. I mean, I love potatoes, but not that much. No, that's a little excessive. Okay. Melody blinked at him thinking once more that he had gone quite insane. What's with the sudden fixation on potatoes? James asked, plopping down into a chair. Sudden? It's not sudden. Potatoes are my love, my life, my passion. Oh, my potato princess will come one day and then we'll ride off to potato land together and we'll probably actually eat, I'll probably actually eat my potato princess, but as the remaining ruler of potato land, I will treat my subjects well. Mm -hmm. Before you eat them? Melody interjected, yes, before I eat them. And I think that's enough potatoes, Sirius. Remus interrupted him laughing. Oh, but I'm not done speaking of my potatoes yet. Sirius cried passionately, jumping onto a chair. First, I must speak of my love for them. Next, I must speak of their deliciousness. Then I must show you all the glorious potato dance. I legitimately don't know what's happening anymore. Me either. And I I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. Also... Just go to the kitchens. Right. The house elves would be more than happy to give you all of the potatoes. Literally all of the potatoes. Any way you want. Mashed? Fried? I don't know. Baked? They probably have all of the options if you're just like, I'm looking for some potatoes. And they're like, okay, here are all of the variations of potato. Cheesy? Like, Mm, I'm sorry. Cheesy potatoes. Oh, cheesy waffle fries. Mmm... Best variation of potato, in my opinion. I do love waffle fries. Melody began giggling uncontrollably. There's a potato dance? She asked. Well, of course there's a potato dance, Sirius cried, sounding shocked. Haven't you ever heard of the potato? The dance of the potatoes, the potato dance, the yam waltz, the spud tango? He jumped off his chair and seized Melody forcing her into a ridiculous sort of non-dance that involved a lot of jumping and spinning and arm-waving. Outside of the potato dance circle, Peter edged over to Remus. Does a yam technically qualify as a potato? He whispered as quietly as he could, but somehow serious, no doubt enchanted potato hearing heard him. Of course they do, he yelled. They're sweet potatoes. You must keep your vegetables straight, Wormtail. Okay, that's enough potato dancing, Melody declared, wriggling away from Sirius. I think that's enough potatoes, James added, smiling, shaking his head. Back to the matter at hand. But the po- Sirius began. The potatoes can wait, Remus said. Sirius crossed his arms, and started pouting. Good doggy, Melody said, patting him on the head. 
For some reason, they all found this hilarious and the room turned into a state of commotion as they laughed in serious, chaste melody around it. To be fair, the fact that that never actually happened in canon by one of his friends and only by, like, people using it as an insult is shocking to mm-hmm. me. Yes. I could see them, like, actually being like, good doggy. And <gasps> good boy. To Remus, too. Of course. Once they had calmed down enough for order, which would not fit a normal person's definition of order, but rather the marauder definition of order that involved a lot of poking, toe-stepping, step- hair-tugging, tongue-sticking, and many rather unnecessary invasions of personal space and caused the room to function at a sound level normally reserved for space shuttle launches. James, Sirius, Remus, and Peter set about teaching Melody everything there was to know about being an animagus, or at least all they knew about being an anime guy. Once they had successfully blown up a chamber pot, and once Melody had successfully transfigured James's foot into a fuzzy pink bunny slipper, they decided to call it quits for the day. Lily Evans waited rather impatiently outside of the library for Mimi Ramirez, who was checking out some books for her. She looked down the hallway and saw, to her disgust, one of her least favorite people in the world, Severus Snape. Well, if it wasn't Lily Evans, he sneered as he approached her. If it, why, if it isn't that greasy-haired little slime ball himself, Lily said, glaring, Was she spending too much time around James? It does sound like it, yes. Yeah. He sneered further. Been spending too much time with your little boyfriend, I see. Lily felt her face flush. What is he, a mind reader? I don't have a boyfriend, she said stiffly, preventing herself from blushing out some... Bursting out something stupid like, James is not my boyfriend, and completely giving herself away... Not to say that she liked James or anything. You're already dating. Stop Stop being ridiculous. I know. Seriously. You guys kissed at the lake. He gave you a charmed flower. You didn't slap him. You did kick him in the shins a little. Snape looked at her for a moment. Not the best liar, are we, Evans? Lily whipped out her wand and pointed it at her. You had better walk... Lily! Come help me with these books. They weigh a ton, Mimi called from the library, loaded down with books and inadvertently saving Lily from making a fool out of herself. Lily put her wand away and ignored the fact that Snape was still there, taking half the pile of books from Mimi's arms and walking distinctly away from him. Mimi spotted Snape before following Lily and said, Ugh, what's he doing here? He shouldn't be studying. He should be washing his hair. Lily giggled. He was just being his evil, slimy self. And asking me about my, ugh, boyfriend. What boyfriend? I don't have a boyfriend. Mimi shook her head. But you do, Lily, and I don't care if it's not official or not. You and James are just, ugh, all over each other. We are not, Lily insisted, her cheeks flushing again. Anyway, thank you for getting these books for me. She said changing the subject so she wouldn't have to talk about James anymore. No problem, Mimi said, and they giggled. I still can't believe you got kicked out of the library. I blame it all on Melody, (laughs) Lily declared as she giggled too. Actually, speaking of, have you seen her anywhere? I haven't talked to her in ages. I have no idea. I haven't seen her since the last potions class, Mimi replied as they reached the entrance to the Ravenclaw common room. They answered the riddle. Lily followed Mimi in and, setting her books down on the table, sighed. I'll have to find her, she said. I'm worried she's conspiring with the marauders again, and if the school weren't so well protected, I'd swear they'd blow it up. Fair. (laughs) Lily shook her head, and Mimi giggled. I might as well go with you, Mimi declared. Where Melody is, there might also be a Remus. Ooh. <laughs> oh, perfect. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Lily said. 
interest, interestedly wiggling her eyebrows. Mimi laughed and blushed. Hey, at least I'm not in denial. Lily stuck out her tongue and was just about to suggest looking for Melody right now. The dear girl saved her the trouble by bouncing through the common room entrance. You! Lily pointed a finger. <laughs> I pointed my <laughs> you finger. You pointed. I did. <laughs> Me, Melody said, looking very happy about something. You look happy. What happened? Aren't I allowed to just be happy? Melody said, plopping down into the beanbag chair. Lily rolled her eyes. What have you been doing? I haven't seen you for two days. Lily plopped down next to her. Melody shrugged. I've been busy. Lily raised an eyebrow. With what? You're never busy, and you don't do your homework until ten minutes before class. What could have you possibly been busy with? What, I'm not allowed to be busy? Melody asked, sounding even more defensive. No, but you're up to something. What are you doing this time? Melody rolled her eyes. Nothing, I just told you. Well, then have you been going on secret dates with Sirius or something? What is it? What is what, Lily? I've been busy. Why can't you accept that, Melody said, most definitely hiding something. Because you're lying to me, Lily cried angrily. I'm not lying, Melody hissed furiously. I am your best friend. I think I can tell, Lily said, tensely crossing her arms. And who said you're my best friend? Melody replied coyly. Stop being so nosy. Lily felt like she had been slapped. It had just been one stupid, simple question. She jumped up out of the beanbag chair and ran up to her dormitory, hearing Melody's footsteps run in the opposite direction. And Mimi was left standing in the common room, very confused. It was just so stupid. She wouldn't leave me alone. And I know she was right, but I'm sick of her always bugging me about stuff. And and don't do this. Don't do that. No, not if the marauders are involved and blah, 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 blah. God, you'd think she was my mother, Melody fumed to Sirius, pacing around MHQ and flinging her hands in all directions to emphasize her anger. If she would just let it go, we... But no, of course she can't let it go. She's little miss perfect Lily, and she can't afford to let anything go. She must obsess over it and pick it to pieces and... Melody! Sirius yelled, interrupting her. Melody stopped abruptly and stared at him. He placed his hands on her shoulders. Come down. Melody said, calm down, calm down, right. I can do that. Really, I can. I really can. Calm down. Whew, I can do that. <laughs> I, I love your interpretation because it feels like how she would say it. <laughs> That's how I would say it. <laughs> Whew, calm, I'm calm, I'm calm. I'm very calm. I can do this. I'm calm. Clearly I'm calm. <gasps> <laughs> Sirius shook his head and smiled. Sit, he commanded, pulling out a chair. Melody, who was in no frame of mind to argue with his orders, sat. Sirius pulled out another chair and sat across from her. He stroked his chin, his chin mostly because he had stubble growing, which he was very proud of. Canon. Like most 16-year-olds also would be. Yep. <laughs> And I would just like her to lay off for a while. Some days I wonder if I'm friends with her. And I know, I know that's so mean. But really, I mean, I don't tell her one thing and she gets all twitchy about it. Sirius blinked, realizing that Melody had started talking again and that he hadn't paid attention. Damn, way to impress the girl, Sirius, he chided himself. Calm down again, he advised. He waited for Melody to calm herself a bit, and then he spoke again. What exactly happened? Melody sighed. Lily, she just got really nosy about our, this whole animage thing. Not that she knows we're animage, but, added hastily, seeing the expression on Sirius's face, well, I mean, I know I'm not exactly one yet, but I will be. 
Sirius didn't quite know what to say. He looked around the room for a moment, considering he wanted to be cool, but around Melody, all his efforts just seemed lost. She was so pretty and so elegant and so perfect that the world was just... That what in the world was he supposed to do? Well, you could always be serious, he reminded himself. And with that, he said... <laughs> you could... <laughs> <laughs> You'd always just give her a potato. I don't think that will fix this situation, Sirius. If anything, she'll just then have more questions like, why the fuck did you just hand me this potato? Like, what the hell? I didn't... Why? I don't need a potato. I don't want your stupid potato. Why are you giving me an uncooked potato? <laughs> you! This is all your fault! James Potter for Rose. Was that McGonagall again? But no, it couldn't be. She always used complete sentences. He turned slowly, thinking it sounded a much more like... Lily, he said, smiling tightly. And not meeting her eyes because she was a lot less scary when you didn't look her in the eyes. What have you done to her? Lily demanded. Who? James asked, not quite sure. He was following the conversation. Melody. Oh, her. Right. Er, I don't know what you're talking about, Lily, dear, but Lily stomped her foot and interrupted him. Don't call me dear. James did meet her eyes now. Well, what should I call you? My little fuzzy wuzzy Lily Bean plant. He asked, trying to be cute, but apparently Lily was not in the mood for cute because she just whipped out her wand and pointed it at his chest. What are you all keeping from me? Lily, James said, looking at her wand. What exactly are you planning to do with that? I don't really know, Lily said annoyed, but I imagine it would involve hexing, cursing, the loss of several limbs. Mine or yours? Lily didn't find that amusing. Just answer my stupid question, James. About Melody? James asked, and Lily nodded slightly and continued to glare at him. Unfortunately, looking into her brilliant, beautiful, bright green eyes wasn't helping him focus on the question, so he decided to look at her nose instead. On her nose, there were lots of freckles. They were very cute. Damn those cute little freckles. James averted his gaze. No, no, no. Not her lips. <sighs> Looking at those wouldn't do. Damn those teenage hormones. <laughs> and no, he better not look any lower than her neck. <laughs> he looked up at the ceiling. It was very boring. As far as ceilings go, very clean. <laughs> Good. James, what exactly are you doing? Would you believe me if I said looking at the ceiling? Well, that is what you're doing, but why? Where else am I supposed to look? Lily grabbed his chin and forced him to look at her. At me, please, while you're answering my question. Why do I have to answer your question? James demanded. Why can't someone else answer your question? Damn it, James! Because I got into a fight with Melody, and she won't tell me what's going on, and she stole Sirius so I couldn't ask him, and you're my book. Lily cut off very suddenly, her cheeks glowing pink. James's lips broke into a grin. I'm your what? Nothing, Lily mumbled. What was that, Lily? James asked, leaning towards her, cupping his hand around his ear. Like he was waiting for her actual response. I didn't say anything. Nothing. I said nothing, Lily insisted, her cheeks still very pink. Oh, but you did. What am I, Lily? James asked, smiling evenly. Hey, you wouldn't answer my question. I'm not answering yours. But I can't answer your question. And why not? Can't, James said again, straightening himself and... Slapping his hand over his heart. Marauder's Code of Honor. Ugh. Lily crossed her arms. Aren't I sort of a marauder? I've been to MHQ. You've also tried to talk to Melody. You've also tried to talk Melody out of 
every grand prank we've ever pulled, James reminded her, and Lily glared. Now, on to my question. What am I, Lily? He asked, grinning evilly once again. Nothing, Lily snapped, spots of color appearing on her cheeks. It's not nothing. What am I? I can't tell you. Can't tell me, but but you're... Oh, wait, I don't know yet. Do I? Hmm. This, as James has planned, caused Lily to blush even further. Is the lily bean plant code of honor? Lily declared, finally slapping her hand over her chest lamely. James pouted for a moment. Fine. Lily sighed and turned to begin to walk away down the hallway. Lily Bean, wait, where are you going? James followed her. What are you doing? You're like a lost puppy. A lost puppy? But I'm a cute lost puppy. Though, right? He asked, giving her a puppy dog face. Lily couldn't help herself. Aw, good doggy. She patted him on the head. James, act James acting like an idiot actually barked and tried to jump into Lily's arms. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, then. That's a lot. You went too far. He did go a little far. <laughs> she shrieked and fell over, James landing on top of her. Ow, Lily groaned. Why do you always have to act like such an idiot? It's just a natural talent, James replied, rolling off her. Lily rolled her eyes at him and accepted the hand James was offering and helped her off the floor. Standing up, she stumbled and shot forward into James's arms, her cheeks going pink once again. She straightened up and found her face very close to his. Classic, she whispered. What? James said, looking very intent on kissing her now. Had he made her trip on purpose or something? Well, this is the part in the movie where the boy and the girl are supposed to kiss. James, without worrying... What a movie was for a moment, he said. Hey, works for me if it works for you. <laughs> well, okay, Lily said, shrugging. But her nonchalant attitude, or for the matter of any attitude at all, disappeared when James's lips touched hers, and she could do nothing but lose herself in another one of James's amazing kisses. Suddenly, a very immature Hooting and howling came from the end of the hallway, and Lily and James broke apart at the sight of Remus Lupin and Peter Pettigrew acting very immature and making far too many suggestive gestures. Lily flushed, confused and irritated, and slapped poor James across the face and dashed down the hallway. There you go. Well, the slaps are back. That's it, Lily Evans, she heard James yell after... After her, you're not coming to my birthday party. What? His birthday's in, like, August. Well, it's in May in this canon, isn't it? No, August, September, I don't know. It was August. It was right before they went back to school. <laughs> they already had the birthday party. Yeah. She threw you a birthday party. You're now banning her from all future birthday parties? I don't understand. I don't think you can do that. Lily rolled her eyes at him. Even as she was running, she let her legs carry her away, 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 up into the tower somewhere where she collapsed, gasping for breath, her head spinning from both the run and the kiss. After she had collected herself a bit, she stood up and looked out at the grounds. The tower had no ceiling and little prevented her from falling, <laughs> falling out but a very low wall that came barely up to her thighs. Guess they had different standards for safety back then, she muttered to herself. Still lovesick, Evans? A horrible, oily voice asked from behind her. Lily's expression hardened, and she turned to glare at the person who belonged to the voice. Still in desperate need of a shower, Snape? You're all the same, he sneered. You stupid Gryffindors and Ravenclaws and Hufflepuffs, all so righteous, so self-confident, so sure of yourself. Better than being a sniveling, groveling weasel of a person like all you Slytherins, Lily shot back. Snape sneered further. 
You think you're so perfect, he spat. So wonderful, so great, so untouchable. Well, they'll show you, he hissed. The sen- he hissed the last sentence at her. We'll show you all. Lily narrowed her eyes, which is why you won, which is why you've won the house tournament so much lately. You know there's something bigger going on out there. You think everything happens inside Hogwarts, you stupid Ravenclaw and Gryffindors. Have taken over the castle like you think it's yours. Like you think the only thing that matters, like you think it's the only thing that matters. There's a bigger world, Evans. And while you're running around playing king of the castle, the Slytherins will be dominating it. Lily crossed her arms at him. He smiled smugly and rather evilly at her before turning away and disappearing down the corridor. What in the world had he been getting at? He seemed to know something she didn't. What was it and why did she care? Who cared if the Slytherins all beat each other to death with their broomsticks? But why had Snape talked? But the way Snape talked, it was like he was in on something, something that was wrong, something that was evil, something only a stupid Slytherin could come up with, most likely. She rolled her eyes, shook her head, and forgot about it. Sirius sat alone in MHQ, simply, simply thinking, normally you wouldn't peg Sirius for a serious person, but underneath all of his immaturity, He was a young wizard who was becoming more and more worried about the emergence of a dark wizard in Britain. I don't know why I had so much trouble with in Britain. really paused before saying Britain. (laughs) Sirius probably worried about things more than all his friends combined. He didn't sleep at night, sometimes worrying about his friends, Remus, a werewolf, James, lovesick and headstrong, rather insecure wizard, Peter, a shy, struggling boy, Lily, a shy, studious witch, rather confused about James, and Melody, a gorgeous, self-confident, silly, talented, beautiful, smart, perfect, damn, Melody, damn, Melody didn't have any faults, did she? She was just perfect. He couldn't find, he could find faults in all of his friends, but she... She, uh, who was he kidding? He was crazy about her. Of course she seemed perfect, he sighed and put his head in his hands and had just started an interesting train of thought when he heard the sound of tapping at the door of MHQ. He looked up and blinked. Why would someone be knocking on the wall? No one knew it was here except for the people who knew the password. Oh, well, he shrugged and got up to open the door. In flew, in flew an owl Sirius had never seen before, bearing a small pink envelope, and for a brief moment, Sirius thought it might be a howler. But as he took it from the owl, he saw that it was simply pink stationery, scented pink stationery. He was intrigued. Smart owl, he muttered. The owl flew back through the open door. Sirius closed it, hoping no one had been watching, and examined the envelope again. Sirius, it said in pretty, in pretty cursive that he did not quite recognize. Well, that was plain enough for him. He shrugged and tore the letter open and read its contents and dropped the letter on the floor. He picked the letter back up, read it again, dropped it again, picked it up again, sat in a chair, read it again, and allowed his jaw to drop open. It was an interesting chapter. (laughs) It was an interesting (laughs) chapter. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on our journey through the trap door. Please leave us a review on Facebook or iTunes. It would literally mean the world to us. It really would. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Through the Trap Door 16 or on Twitter at The Trap Door. And please send us an email at Through the Trap Door 16 at gmail.com with any story suggestions. And as always, join us again next Saturday as we travel Through the Trap Door. Oh.